Welcome to Voices, Visions and Extreme States in Film. This is a bit of a, what's the word, arrogant, is that the right word? Ambitious, maybe ambitious, we'll go with that, it, it's kinder. Um, a, a sort of an, a, an ambitious take to try and go through a few different ways Voices, Visions and other kind of extreme experiences are portrayed in film. It was great until I remembered that I couldn't think of any films. And then over the last 48 hours, I've got far too many. So we've got this giant playlist that we're just gonna try and dip into a few of them. If you hear in the background a woof or a loud sort of meow, that's not my child. That's my very noisy cat wanting some attention. Um, if there's a male voice, it's also not my cats. That will make more sense as we see some of the clips. That's Joel. Few things for today. Um, just some ground rules, really. I ask that um, you're all kind to one another and kind of keep by the HVN ethos. Those of you that have been here before will be used to that, which is that there isn't a right way or a wrong way of seeing things. There's just lots of different perspectives and we're kind of open to all of those. Um, that we really try and respect each other and be interested in our differences. And most of all, be kind, because we're all here for some reason or other. And if one of us uses the wrong words or doesn't quite say something that's politically correct or whatever, if we can kind of be generous and just go, okay, so what you said there just kind of made my skin crawl a bit, but that doesn't mean you're a bad person. I tend to speak like this instead. Yeah, no, that's the vibe. Apart from that, um, this is not a peer support group. So some of you may be coming for your own sort of support and connection. You're really welcome here but it doesn't have the safety of a proper peer support group. Um, I can share a list of those afterwards so that you know where to get the proper sort of HVN peer support vibe during the lockdown. Um, it's being streamed live on YouTube. So there'll be people there watching. Hi, people on YouTube. But they won't be able to see the chat feed or any questions or anything. They can only see people that appear in the room. So our lovely faces, the poor people on YouTube. Um, Anything else that's the things we've got until half past nine. Um, just if you've never used Zoom before, it's kind of an easy-ish platform, I think, for webinars. Some of you have discovered the hand feature, raise hands. If you could all have a go at it now, just to see that it works. I want to see at least 30 hand raised. Owen's got two. Raise them up, raise them up. Yeah. Basically, if at some point you want to join by audio, or um, come in as a video person to comment on a film and give your perspective, raise your hand. And that's a sign to me and the guys that we should invite you in. Um, we won't invite everyone that raises the hand all the time because it'll be really confusing, but we'll leave lots of space. So if you could put your hands down now for a bit. And no, what we'll do is I'll sort of say, hey, does anyone want to come in? Raise your hand and invite a few of you that want to come in. Some of you have already discovered the chat thing. Um, you can press this little speech button um, and it gives you this lovely um, chat screen where you can speak to other participants. Again, it's not visible through um, YouTube, but it's a nice way of just commenting, chatting with each other. You can comment on the films or the points we're making, anything you like. If you want to say something that you want us to really see on the panel, you can either type as a direct message to all panelists. Um, it's cool, Gary, I shall give them all an introduction in a second, um, just asking who, who you guys are, the weird people with the headphones. They didn't say that. Um, that you can either go to all panelists as a message or even better, you can use the Q&A. If you click on the Q&A, you can ask a question or make a point and me as the kind of chair will have a little look and bring it into the space. This is stuff, if you don't wanna say it yourself, you just want me to kind of bring it in, use the Q&A. We may do some polls later if I feel brave, that might be above and beyond my technical know-how at this time of night on a Friday, but we'll see. I think that will make sense. So on with the show, who are these lovely people that I have beside me? <laughs> um, who wants to go first? You say a bit about yourself and what brings you here. Um, shall I go? 
Yeah, I'll go. Yeah, yeah. go for it. Um, hey, my name's Owen. Um, I am a voice hearer and I'm a member of the HVN's board of trustees. Um, I also, to add some extra relevance to the specific topic, my degree was in film production and I worked as like a imaging technician's assistant for a couple of years or so. And I don't know if that, that's not exactly like a kind of Spielberg level kind of like credit to go like flaunting around, but I kind of, I have a, what you could call an interest, I suppose, in films, maybe. And I kind of understand some of the, like, or I pretend I understand some of the, like, stuff that goes on behind the camera, maybe. But we'll see if that's, that might just be lies. <laughs> we'll see. And my name's John. I also pretend I know what goes on behind the camera for a living. So I'm a filmmaker, um, and I... I guess you could say uh, films kind of drove me mad in a really short story. Uh, so I dropped out of film school after being sectioned and all that fun stuff. So I come at this with two different hats. Two lovely hats, I'd say. Yeah, yeah. no actual hat though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Owen did have a hat earlier. Yeah. And get it out again later, maybe. Um, as for me, um, I am uh, Ray, some of you know me already, some of you don't, lucky you. I'm the chair of the English National Hearing Voices Network. Uh, someone who hears voices, has visions, has multiple diagnoses. I could give you a little list if you want, but it's not that exciting. Um, and I am the worst person to have on a film night because I have an amazing ability to forget the names of actors, directors, films, people, characters. I get the stories, but I drive my husband a bit um, with my lack of being able to remember stuff. However, I am really interested in the topic and how it's portrayed. So I'm like the, the voice of the person that's not a film geek on the panel, really. Um, everyone needs one of those. Huh. So um, Craig has asked, is it possible to see everyone? Um, unfortunately, in terms of the group, the way we've set it up um, to keep people's anonymity is that you can't see the participants or know who's there unless they speak on the chat or ask a question. Um, but if some of you do want to join us in the room later, um, we can have a little party. No, that sounded wrong. Getting too far into <laughs> my, my Friday night excitement. So where, oh, before we do a no, I'm torn to either ask a question of you guys. Um, I am probably just going to um, play a clip. And not, yeah, why do we, why are we just blah, 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 let's play a clip. We thought we'd start with the classic. And just to be clear, we've got a whole range, stuff from Inside Out, sort of kids films, um, Drop Dead Fred, to X-Men, Psycho, the voices, you know, we're covering all of the bases here. Some of them we think are good, some not so good, and we're going to discuss all of these little bits. But first, Psycho, which I'd never seen before. Um, but I felt we should include it. So there's two little clips from there. Um, here is the first one, she says. What I've got to do is share screen. This is the scary part. This is where we... Oh, I should say, if some of these films will actually be maybe a little, I hate the word triggering, but intense. Um, so if this film is a thing that you just don't want to see, there is no shame in just like muting it or just going and making a cup of tea and then coming back when we've got over it. Um, and if there's something that shows something which I think is maybe quite traumatic or difficult, I'll just say so you can again take a break if you need to. Yeah, don't no leave judge. anyone in bad position mm. cool so psycho um this is just one clip and then we'll get to the other one i am sorry i, I only felt it seems she's hurting you i meant well people always mean well they cluck their thick tongues and shake their heads and suggest oh so very delicately Of course, I've suggested it myself, but I hate to even think about it. She needs me. 
It's not as if she were a, a maniac, a raving thing. She just goes a little mad sometimes. We all go a little mad sometimes. Haven't you? Ah, that's clip one. Um, clip two is quite different. So is there anything you want to say about this, guys? Uh, I really like that scene. I think it's kind of under-talked about from Psycho because it actually it's actually quite a nuanced take on it, isn't it? It's, mm -hmm. um, I guess you could say it's trying to normalise madness in a way by saying we all go a little bit mad sometimes. Mm. Mm, the, I'm like Norman Bates, who is the character in, in Psycho, who is the like the, the Psycho, is um, the it, it, sometimes it can be really like under portrayed as being quite like two dimensional and stuff. And like you said, John, that kind of like that scene is over, often overlooked thing that kind of fleshes him out a little bit, you know, as a more three dimensional kind of guy. Yeah. And at the time as well, that 1960. So at that time in film, villains weren't portrayed like that at all they weren't kind of more gentle or softly spoken or articulate they were like monsters evil like, well, yeah, yeah. Kind of, yeah like yeah. very visible evil mm. yeah and i kind of love it for just that um the nuance in the relationship because it, it's actually quite disturbing in a way because in the whole longer clip he goes from being kind of like really vulnerable to really kind of like attacking the woman, like, how dare you? And it, there's some vitriol in the first bit when he speaks that it doesn't sound like him. And then he goes back again, just that shifting between different states and his relationship with his mum, that sense of it being really complicated, actually. I think that's what it's saying. It's complicated and you're not going to understand it. Yeah. And yeah, does in terms of the plot, if I'm right here, his mum isn't actually alive at that point. Correct. I was thinking that. Sorry for the spoiler, if that's um, <laughs> uh, a thing, but it's uh, and that makes it confusing. When you're watching it, do you know that, or does it kind of dawn on you later? That's the big twist at the end. Right at the end. Gee, Quite a literal thanks, twist. <laughs> Well, it's okay because we're going to play that one next anyway. Oh, there we Sorry. go. Yeah, there we go. Um, <laughs> but even me, who's never watched it, seen it, and that's kind of interesting thing. Because I guess what they're doing is making this character so the mum so vivid that you mm. never question it. Yeah, and I don't think that they're trying to normalise those sorts of ideas mm. to serve society. I think it's doing it to serve the plot. And it's a common one, isn't it? We've talked yeah. about that earlier, but how how it is very common. Um, sorry, spoiler, says Mirabai. <laughs> terrible, terrible me. We should also say that um, some I've noticed some of you are messaging just panelists and not panelists and attendees. So if you wanted to message everyone, make sure you go to the drop down next to two and switch it to all panelists and attendees, but only if you wanted to message everyone. If you just wanted it to be to us three, then. And we have been spoken to, um, but it does There are some people who have said, or just to all panellists, and I didn't know if they wanted that to be to everyone or not. You know. No, I think that's a really helpful thing. A helpful guy. You are a helpful guy. Um, so I'm going to play the next one. Um, I've partly been stalling for time because it randomly didn't appear in my list of things that I've actually clipped. It's disappeared. So I'm going to play it from YouTube while streaming to YouTube. This is some kind of geniusness. It's pretty meta. That's quite yeah. matter, yeah. Um, so this is the next one. Hopefully it will work and not explode the universe. And I apologize if I do explode the universe in advance. There we go. Bit of... Fingers crossed. Come on, you can do it. Can it do it? Can I do it? No. Yes. Uh, okay, cool. He feels a little chill. Can I bring him this blanket? Oh, sure. All right.
Thank you. It's sad when a mother has to speak the words that condemn her own son, but I couldn't allow them to believe that I would commit murder. They'll put him away now, as I should have, years ago. He was always bad, and in the end, he intended to tell them I killed those girls and that man, as if I could do anything except just sit and stare, like one of his stuffed birds. Oh, they know I can't even move a finger, and I won't. I'll just sit here and be quiet, just in case they do suspect me. They're probably watching me. Well, let them. Let them see what kind of a person I am. I'm not even going to swat that fly. I hope they are watching. They'll see. They'll see, and they'll know, and they'll say, why, she wouldn't even harm a fly. <sighs> the joy. Um, ah, any thoughts on that one? Yeah, definitely, yeah. Where to start? I think, uh, um, I think the film itself is, is a masterpiece. Uh, Mm. just from like a film point of view but probably the, maybe the most um like responsible film on this list for kind of affecting society and it kind of planted a seed mm. like a, it's almost like a cultural touchstone now isn't it just that word psycho yeah anything with that attached to it like whether it's psychologist or psychosis or whatever it might be that suffers for it and it comes with some baggage mm. yeah and you can try and give it a free pass because of the the time that it was made but it doesn't actually make the effect any different really does it you know like it doesn't make it any lesser but you are yeah. right it yeah. being just if we just observe Hitchcock's filmmaking as being really lovely it's it's really lovely you know in terms of the actual filmmaking but him him looking into the camera at the end as well very powerful stuff. yeah it's like you never when a, when a, when someone actually looks into the camera on films, you as the audience are like, "Oh, I feel, I feel uncomfortable. This is, doesn't normally happen." So it's very like a important device, and he like invented a lot of those devices to begin with. Yeah, it's iconic that that whole last scene as well, isn't it? Mm. It's that last scene. Um, I as I was watching it, and I've watched it too many times today, so it's properly under my skin. Um, but what I get from that is initially it looks like it's him um, listening to his mum's voice speaking and then I get like a shift in the middle because initially he's like looking around and he's nodding at what she's saying and stuff and then she seems he slash she seems to embody the mum um, and it gets more uh, what's the word sinister at that point um, and the voice changes slightly so yeah, I, I really spoke to me about this who's who thing. Mm. But as some people have um, have uh, sort of said, this is like Dolly mentioned as well, that this is very much um, like you've said, it's responsible for a hell of a lot of stigma. And another person has said as well that because I guess it was the first one, everyone assumes that all people labeled with some form of mental distress uh, going to, you think of the shower scene, don't you? You don't think about the subtleties. Mm. Um, unless you're a film buff, you tend to think about the murdering psycho and that sticks. Yeah. Mm. Ah, the joys. Is there anything anyone wants to say about that who's in the audience that want to actually um, come in? You don't have to at this point because there'll be other chances, but it's if you want to say something about psycho, raise your hand um, and let us know. Otherwise, we'll go to another clip. Oh, we've got raised hands. This is exciting. No one did it on the music. Oh, oh. <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> we weren't ready. No, it's brilliant. Uh, we've got Craig and Louisa. Um, so I'm going to allow both of you to talk. And if you want your video on, you can tell me when we can actually hear you. So hopefully you meant to do it. Um, there, Craig and Louisa. You can okay. unmute your microphones now. Hopefully. 
Am I testing one, two, three? Oh, uh, yes, you're there. Uh, Hello, I'm guessing Kermit. that's Craig. And yeah. Louisa, have we got it's, you as well? It's actually Kermit. Oh, hello, Kermit. It's good to see you as well. Um, we'll hear you. Do you want your videos activating as well? Or? Yeah, sure, yeah. Yeah, both of you? Uh, I, I can't speak for Louisa, but I don't mind. Uh. <laughs> right. I think I've heard from both. It's hard when there's two male voices, and I've actually got a lot of voices right now as well, so <laughs> I'm a male, so it gets even more confusing. Right, I'm promoting you guys to panellists for a second. Um, and then if you want, you can um, enable your camera, hopefully. Don't get too comfy because I have the power to then put you back in the audience because there might be others that want to say stuff too. Hello. Hello there, are you all right? Hey. Nice to see you. Uh, you. <laughs> yeah, so what, what thoughts have you had about Psycho? Uh, well, I mean, I, I'm a big fan of Alfred Hitchcock and uh, I mean, not just Psycho, I mean, all, all, most of his films, but it's interesting to look at his biography um, and the relationship that he had with his mother. His mother was a very dominant figure in his life. And, uh, and, and so he, I think th through film, it was his way of um, putting context to some of his own experiences, his, his relationship with his mother. Um, but yeah, Psycho is, is probably my favorite. Um, it's what got me into film and my, my interest in film because it had such a, 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 the way he did it, you know, it was such a, it was such a shock. It was such a red herring, you know, we, we didn't see it coming. Mm -hmm. uh, and that moment when Cy, when Norman Bates appears dressed up in his, as his mother, you know, she, she's really embodying in, inside his psyche, you know, she's really taken over and Norman Bates has been sort of his, his psyche has now sort of been shifted to one side whilst his mother is. Yeah. Mm. Um, and all, and the, the image that is, he, Alfred Hitchcock was, he did it very subtly. He did right at the last frame of when Norman Bates looks up at the camera, you see a, a slight glimpse of his mother's, look, the dead mother, uh, the skull. I don't know if anyone picked up on that. Oh, no, I never noticed that. No, if you watch it again, if you watch it, I'll definitely watch that check last it. bit very yeah. slowly, and you'll see like Alfred Hitchcock. He he didn't he didn't make yeah. it. He just well, I just I'll just I'll put a a slight frame in there just to see if anyone catches it. And if you watch it again, I don't know if, if you got the opportunity to, to play it back. Just watch that last bit. You see the the the, the dead mother's uh, face appear through Norman Bates. Mm -hmm. Chilling. I mean, Alfred Hitchcock. He was he was the master. At, it's more uh, spooky because it's hard to spot as well. Exactly. It's like, <laughs> Ooh, you know. did, did I see that? Did that did that really happen? Um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's blink and you'll miss it. But it's interesting. I don't know. So, did everyone see that then? Well, how did they? Was it just you? But... <laughs> well, if you, I don't know if it's, it's possible to play it back because it is there and it it, it isn't just me going. Oh my gosh, because. Um, if you watch it, if you watch it carefully, you'll see the dead mother's face appear through normal yeah, faces. I've, I've seen that before too. Yeah. Well, I think you're, um, you're, Kermit. I think your uh, sound isn't so happy, or your internet connection, pesky thing. Um, any better? Oh, we can see you now. Yeah. So, do you have any thoughts, Kermit? I do. Um... A slightly challenging thought, maybe, but um, starting with the fact that Anthony Perkins, the play, who played um, what's his name, played Norman, uh, was was gay, very very out gay actually, uh, and it was it's just interesting to think about that in terms of I mean I think that um, the, you know uh, so the, the views of the psychiatry towards homosexuality at the time mm. and that um, Hitchcock really pretty was pretty deep into that I mean I think you know the actual the summation of the film goes deep into Freudian theory uh, and also one of his other films Marnie goes deep is a pretty is a very problematic uh, but at the same time kind of deep exploration of dissociative identity disorder mm. um, I don't, I don't recommend in terms of because it's so problematic, uh, but it's a, given that it's surprisingly 
at least interesting as far as how deep it, it goes. Mm. Um, and um, in pathetically, uh, but not, but not, you know, still very mostly problematic. Mm -hmm. um, but it's just interesting. I find it interesting to think about all that in terms of this, uh, some of the themes of this film, which aren't very, um, you know, they're not very overt, uh, but it's hard to, hard not to think about it as, as being pretty out there for the time, mm -hmm. I guess. Mm -hmm. That's all, that's my thought. Now that's interesting. And I, I think one thing we might get onto later, or I'm just gonna float it for not to go too deep into it now, cause I'm keen to kind of keep things mm -hmm. moving. So, cause we could do an hour and a half just on those clips really, couldn't we? Um, especially if we got to hear from everyone else. Um, but it's about ethical responsibility. Do filmmakers have that, eth have an ethical responsibility about what they convey? Cause there's some that's really hard. intense messages and how do they, navigate that um. I think there's a responsibility definitely mm. uh, uh, I mean I think as a filmmaker myself it, it's 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 being the observer you know it, it's it's not good you know it's uh, it's be, I mean it's an exploration of all these different archetypes that are hidden within the film uh, and I always find if you watch a film say 10 years ago and you watch it now the film hasn't changed your perception of it's changed mm. I always find I always find there's a yeah. magic about watching a film that I watched a while back and then watch it now, it's like, oh, I didn't see that. And because mm. you're relating to it in a different way. You're, you're filling in the gaps in a way. Mm. Yeah, to sound very, really very pretentious, <laughs> great art always requires revisiting. <laughs> I like that, we can have that as a pretentious t-shirt quote. Um, we can maybe, because this is a film night as well, there might be a number of them. And then I'll have my stupid t-shirt quote things of the not knowing about film stuff. But yeah, I think we need to move on. Otherwise we'll get lost in psycho territory. Um, but the bugbearer have, that the filmmaker has a, they do have a responsibility, but you can't predict what happens with your film. And the, I wonder how Hitchcock would feel that he's like created so much uh, crap for those of us labeled with psychosis um, mm. that that movie was part of it. I don't know whether he had the intention to do that. Oh, I, I think it's, it, you know, it was, it was more for like, just let this thing out. I think it, some stuff, some, some artists don't even realize themselves. It's just something else is communing through, through them. I, I find from my perception of things. No, I'd, I'd go with that. But what I meant isn't his fault. It's like, it's that difficulty. Like you put something out there, it gets famous and people run with it and you can't predict what's going to You could happen. have had no idea how influential it would have become in that way, you know, so. Mm. Right, I'm gonna uh, let you guys come at and Craig out of the room um, and put you, <laughs> put you back in your place. Gosh, thanks guys. Awesome. Thanks, lovely to Cheers. see you. I'm gonna put you back to an attendee, but thanks for coming in. Um, and again, this could really go to my head, couldn't it? But unfortunately the panelists things is above there. There we go, change to an attendee. Oh, I liked having people in the room. <laughs> it was nice, it. that was nice, yeah. Um, I'm feeling the need for something a little different. We were going to play Split next, and I'm thinking that's just um, half an hour of murderous, like, tropes. Um, yeah. <laughs> can, but this idea about identity um, got me thinking, and we also have Inside Out, um, which is a kind of a voices identity crossover. So I want to play that one if it's Yeah, okay. do that one. Do that one. I like that one. Yay. I want that one. We like that one. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen again. Hopefully it works. Yay. We're supposed to live here? We have I'm telling to. you, it smells like something died in here. Did you die from moving? Guys, you're overreacting. Nobody is dying. A dead mouse! Ah! Great. I'm gonna be sick. House of the dead. What are we gonna do? We're gonna get rabies. Get off my man! Hey, hey, hey! All through the drive, Dad talked about how cool our new room is. Let's go check it out. It's gonna be great. Yes, 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 yes. No, 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 no. I'm starting to envy the dead mouse. Get out the rubber ball. We're in solitary confinement. Riley can't live oh, here. It's right. the worst. It's really bad. It's, it's absolutely the worst. This house it's the worst oh, prison oh, ever oh, been in my entire life. Oh, yeah. Hey, it's not.
nothing our butterfly curtains couldn't fix. I read somewhere that an empty room is an opportunity. Where did you read that? It doesn't matter. I read it, and it's great. We'll put the bed there and the desk over there. The hockey lamp goes there. Uh, put the chair there. Put the trophy clock over the there. Poster there. Stars. We need more yeah, I like that. Now we're talking. Let's go get our stuff from the moving van. All right. Goodbye. Well, guess what? The moving van won't be here until Thursday. You're kidding. Mm -hmm. oh, the van is lost? Oh, yeah. the the is lost. Just going you said it would be here yesterday. Yeah, I know that's what I said. That's what they told me. They are stressed out. They are stressed out. What are we going to do? Is there a problem? I've got a great idea. Did you even read the contract? Anderson makes her move. She's closing in. Such a change of pace. Yeah, that was nicer. That was a, a bit more, more pleasant, wasn't it? <laughs> Crap DJ. <laughs> it's like uh, jumping all over the place. But yeah, thoughts. Really sweet little movie. I love Pixar. And um, I've not actually... When I, when I watched that, first, that scene the first time around, I've, I've heard people talk about it in terms of like using it for like voices and stuff. But I, I wasn't thinking about it in that way. It's funny what you said, John, about watching things back again. And now, watching it now, thinking about voices as I watched it, I'm like, oh, that's pretty damn relevant. You know, it's really like um, the way that the, the, the manner in which they're conversing, I don't know, it's quite, it, it rings some bells. And as I was thinking earlier, interesting that children tend to start hearing voices more commonly when they have a house move or like a move of situation where they're like uprooted or like changed things and stuff like that. So it's quite um, relevant in that sense, actually. So, yeah. Yeah. And I think that probably makes a change to a lot of other films where they show the character's background and it's, it's not really uh, to kind of get any sort of meaning. It's more just to kind of explain this monster. Mm -hmm, yeah. Like a backstory, an origin of, yeah. how, of how Norman got so beastly or something. Yeah, okay. yeah and the, um, the part slash voices slash emotions are very much part of the story. Um, they're kind of, they're part of the girl. Like the whole girl thing. Yeah. I loved, in a weird way, it was similar to the psycho moment that it's hard for me to work out whether their voices, whether they're emotions and aspects of self or parts because you see her face change and you're not sure if she's listening to them talking or if this is an emotional dialogue it doesn't really matter and that echoes my thing of working with kids that hear voices that actually it can be really it doesn't need naming yeah what's the big mm. deal yeah I like the potential that you could watch that as a kid and then grow up and have that as like a reference point rather than something like psycho maybe yeah, that's lovely. That's lovely. Get them young and teach them something positive, for Christ's yeah. sake. Yeah. Pixar, someone's mentioned Pixar is a great thing for emotions for kids, but my two year old loves Pixar movies. Um, Woolly, particularly, but you know, it's pretty That's good got a good message about the environment. Mm. Yeah, we're getting. We know. Right. You know. <laughs> Maxine has raised their hand. I'm wondering if they wanted to come in and. Um, Thing. So I'm just going to allow you to talk, Maxine, just in case you've got something you'd like to say. Hopefully I've not freaked you out. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Hi, Ray. Hi, everyone. Thank you. It's uh, just an amazing, uh, to firstly, to say thanks for um, putting this together. It's amazing. And um, Ray, can you hear me? Yeah, very much. Lovely. So just going to say that I'm probably going to, like all ideas, I'm probably going to steal it because I'm a... Um, a lecturer in mental health nursing I think this would be a fantastic thing to get students involved in mm. to see how stigma starts in society and stuff which would be great mm -hmm. um, but going back to the Pixar film um, I very much think this is a mate like you say can be seen in different levels so I think emotionally because I've I think I love this film because it shows you that we need sadness mm. um, to be able to experience happiness and actually sometimes we need sadness for people to offer help and um, so that's the way I portrayed it to my 13 year old daughter and um, but also as well I think um have used it in a sense because she sometimes says that she hears voices mm. um, and thoughts and things like that um, and I say well that's perfectly normal lots of people hear voices um, and it's just how we in interpret them and talk to them and stuff so I think it does normalize a lot of things for us I think so it's a great mm. film and like, again just thank you so much for putting this on. Ah, you're welcome and um, thank you very much and I shall I'm guessing that's the end of what you were hoping to say. So I'm going to yes. 
Um, <laughs> take away your privilege of speaking. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Maxine. Thank you so much, guys. <laughs> Thank you. But this is it, it just starts conversations because I think the only reason we've got these fixed labels of hallucinations and that is because someone's had an issue with them or people have become very distressed and people have got interested in, what do we have to call them? But if we, when we step away from the murdering psychopath trope and, and the extreme distress, you've got this world, which is part of the voice hearing world too. And it crosses over with emotions, it's just a, yeah. There's also many uh, films about hearing voices, or well, not even about hearing voices, but with these motifs that we're discussing, whereby the environment of the film is, film is just so, or the plot is just so extraordinary. Mm. John was saying lots of the details to do with the voices are just thrown in there to further the plot, mm. to make the plot more spicy and exciting. Yeah. And, oh, now he's going to do this thing, you know, it's, and, um, and it's because it's. The, the exact opposite, like we're saying, completely non-sensationalist, very mundane plot line about what's going on for her, but very real at the same time. So, yeah. yeah, and I think a difference to a lot of other films like this that um, they make it seem understandable, don't they? Whereas a lot of these films, they exploit the fact that most of society think this is something that you can't explain or you can't understand. Mm. So you don't need, we don't need to think up an understandable plot just throw it off on these just, people just because he crazy you know yeah yeah oh what's the reason he did that because he crazy and then you can just explain anything like that it's like in a fantasy movie being like it's magic yeah like, oh, waking up from a dream because he's because he's because he's local <laughs> he, he did some stuff you know it's whereas if you actually have to provide justifications it's more like ah now that's more complicated um, mm. about that. write a good story you know <laughs> and a proper movie around voices and visions and stuff would have that yeah. context right in there yeah exactly life mm -hmm. or whatever um it wouldn't be the answer it'd just be part of the questions um i'm wondering about where do we go next because i've got in my head i'm thinking we could go for a bit of medicalization you know something that's <laughs> called something <Lovely>. crazy <laughs> um or we could go more with the fantasy sort of which do you fancy I know I'm giving you a choice. It's dealer's I'm, choice. I'm going to go towards fantasy just because it's a Friday night and I want to feel nice. You know, <laughs> I'm, not whatever. Sure. I'm not the boss. You do you, what you want, Ray. You know, <laughs> but people saying fantasy in chat though. So what? I'm, I'm just saying. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Someone wants to watch Inside Out again. I do actually have the whole thing. I could just scream. Not on all of Inside Out. Just uh, all of um, no. Yeah. <laughs> what I think of, let's go fantasy. I'm going to throw a curveball in here. Because um, we were talking a little bit about how the filmmakers don't necessarily know what it is that they're actually creating. And so we can read all kinds of things into things that they don't necessarily mean. Uh, one of my favourite films is precisely that. Um, it's a bit weird and this comes with a trauma warning in the my reading of this is very much it's based in dissociation and trauma, but it's called um, sucker punch and it got massively slated by many women because of its treatment of, of women being scantily clad and it's quite sexualized so there's no sex in this don't worry but yeah it's a controversial choice so we'll throw it in the middle um and hope open minds open minds but i love it and i'll explain why i love it afterwards um if you bear with us but feel free to walk away or do whatever it is you need to do because I don't want to make anyone feel crappy on a Friday evening or Saturday morning if you're in New Zealand. Here we go. Don't you girls have some work you should be doing? You came to help us. No. I came to keep you from getting killed. Thank you. We don't have a lot of time. So if you're done with the pleasantries, you've got a dance to do. Amber, radio.
gonna wanna watch this. What's on our dance card for tonight? The bomb, codename Kitchen Knife, is on a hijack train. It is protected by a couple dozen mechanized gunmen. The idea is simple. Take care of the gunmen, deactivate the bomb, and steal it. The code numbers for the bomb and the jet packs for your escape are in that duffel. Got it. Sweet pea, I'm glad you changed your mind. Well, there you have it. You know, for those who fight for it, life has a flavor the shelter will never know. We've still got some people left, yay. Hello. <laughs> they stayed out, they didn't leave. <laughs> ah, so why did I chose that? Um, Oh, I remember seeing it in the cinema, I think, uh, and halfway through it going, oh my God, this is, this is the most accurate thing of dissociation and voices to me and my trauma history that I've ever seen. Um, I don't wear skimpy outfits and go um, fighting sort of people and, and all of that. What is it? It's something about, there's three layers of reality in it. And I often live with different layers of reality. You've got the one in which she's um, been institutionalized because her dad killed her mom and she's kind of in a psychiatric institution trying to escape. <laughs> and the next layer is she's in some kind of like club slash uh, gentleman's club, entertainer, dancing, the sexualized part. Um, where she's got more power um but it's like it feels like she's taken stuff from her life and what's happening in the asylum and it's kind of distanced from it but all she's had to paint with is the, her experiences thus far so it comes out quite it's still she's still oppressed um but it's oppressed in a different way and then finally there's this other layer where she's still in a sort of hypersexualized costume and everything but she's kicking butts and she's a really good fighter and so she's found sort of power, but what she's had to draw on is her life experiences. And she exists in all of them at the same time. And it keeps going through them at different things. And the plot goes through them and the symbols go through them. And you're never quite sure which one she resides in. And yeah, just uh, that that's massive for me. It's not about voices so much um, as realities. Any thoughts from you guys? It's quite an ambitious film, isn't it? Yeah. So much going on. <laughs> Giant samurai fights and stuff. Man. Yeah, and it's a bit like a video game as well, isn't it? Yeah, like, yeah. You could read it as you have to go through all these different trials just to get out of this place, which I would probably relate to quite well. Mm. Oh, well. When I was in a psychiatric hospital, I loved video games and stuff, but they wouldn't let us bloody play them because they were too, like, quote unquote, violent. So, oh, I mean, like, it's almost like you have to go through all this, like, I have to defeat these, uh, like, German soldiers, so I have to, like, battle this giant samurai. Yeah, these obviously evil, like, on it, like, robo, like, when he says, like, mechanized gunman, I was like, oh, yeah, brilliant. <laughs> Bring out the mechanized gunman. <laughs> but, like, I really, um, I see what you mean, Ray, about, like, the, the level of, like, escapism and stuff. There's been so many times when I've, like, ended up having, like, little um, fantasies in my head like that. And I thought I was totally the only person who used that as a way of coping, if you know what I mean, as being like, no, I'll make this seem like this is some kind of like thing. And who knows how much of that has to do with my like voices or how much of that is just like 
the standard human condition you know what i mean but mm -hmm. totally like if we choose to look past some of the more maybe like fluffy elements of the movie there's there is that big core that you, that you said that you can't really overlook so yeah for real it uses that 360 degree shot in a different way to some of the transition other ones. to yeah. the new kind of reality yeah that pops up a lot in these films yeah yeah because then it will like then the background will slowly fade as it's changing and you'll be like oh she's somewhere else and then you notice that she's got a radio in her ear you mm. see it's, it's like there's a that transition to the new reality and stuff. Mm. um i've just noticed a question which is i can't answer because i know nothing about this but claire mm. has asked i wonder if it's similar to the alice video games i'm guessing is that alice in wonderland or i don't know yeah, I've heard of those. I've never played them. I think they are a little Alice in Wonderland-ish. Mm. We thought even we're not doing books. We might do voices in books one week. You never know. We can go quite a long while with this theme. Um, but yeah, Alice in Wonderland as a, a concept is a really interesting one. Same as the Lion Witch and the Werewolf. I see dissociation and trauma everywhere. It's uh, it's one of my frameworks I need to get away from. I think sometimes. I think it's, it's probably speaks to like people in general as well, doesn't it? And that kind of escapist that mm. that's what we want from films a lot of the time to begin with, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. Um, next one, because we're now 10 to 10 to 9. Where do we go? Where this? did it go? We've done some fantasy. <laughs> Shall we get some reality? Ooh. Yes. I think we have to. We, we need something more explicitly voices, I think. Shall we do? Because yeah. you said about the 360 um, turn thing. I remember when we were doing our run through, we played a video that had this, which would be mm. part of A Beautiful Mind, I think. Um, again, there'll be spoilers involved in this. If you haven't watched the movie, I'm really sorry. Just ignore us and, and switch the audio off if you want to kind of keep your spoilers um, free. Otherwise, I'm going to play a little clip from this. It's probably the most famous sort of depiction of, of what gets called schizophrenia. It's not her fault. John. She'll compromise us again. No, she won't. You'll go back to the hospital. John, answer me. Countless people will die. Alicia, please put the phone down. I can't let that happen. Yes. Hello. I need Dr. Rosen. Is he in? I'm sorry, John. No! <laughs> you know what you have to do, Nash. She's too great a risk. Get away! I didn't mean to hurt you. Finish her. She knows too much now. Good John. You take care of her, you pathetic piece of shit, or I'll take care of you. Show me. Oh, Christ, John, please. Do what he says. Move, soldier. No. Uncle John. John, please! No! Venetian Charles no coexist in the same way. I can feel Venetian parts in the world. I'm going to say, Charles for the Charles is watching her. With Alicia. I understand. She never gets old. Marcy can't be real. She never gets old. Uh, yeah, the spinny one was there. That was the same yeah, spinny shot. That, spinny. that was an epic mm. one as well. They little flashbacks. Loads the angle cuts. changing, the angle, like oh. the perspective, like so much spinning. <laughs> Just like, I'm so disoriented already. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And the sounds. The I've got music. some like mixed feelings about that one big time because like in some in some ways i absolutely hate it because it seems like it's a v not great maybe a very unhelpful depiction maybe 
potentially like over dramatized and corny like we were saying for the sake of like making the movie look good and kind of spicy and saucy and interesting but also it's kind of the one that we've watched that i probably relate to the most from my own experience of hearing voices so i just kind of have to throw a big shoulder shrug up in the air there and be like i don't know what that means does that mean that it's good or bad or you know like so ambivalence mm -hmm. Yeah, certainly, because I it covers the violent voices, which uh, really speak. People are a reality, so you can't like deny that that exists for some for a lot of people, you know. And it it's kind of it it goes there. Um, so I've definitely got voices telling me to hurt others. Um, mm. I know a lot of people do, even if we don't talk about them in polite company because we don't want to get sectioned and or ostracised. It's a hard thing to talk about, mm. but it's there. And I guess it kind of touches it in a way that shows the power of it, but it pulls back and makes everything right at the end because he suddenly has this moment of realization, oh, they're not real. And that's a big sentence in itself. And then mm. suddenly he's going and making it better with his wife who he's completely, who's completely frightened because she doesn't know what the hell's going on. And he accidentally pushed her while trying to save her. So there's all these, like I remember being in hospital and having loads of miscommunications like that where someone thought I was violent because I was reacting to the voices. I didn't mm. hurt anyone. And I have to say that because I'm on TV. Well, <laughs> um, yeah, so it is kind of ish, but also kind of not. So I think when you're trying to depict something that's invisible or someone's like in a world. It's kind of, it's really hard to do to kind of paint that on a screen, isn't it? Mm. And make it seem realistic or do it justice or you know. Yeah. It it's tricky. It's something that I like the film in, in the whole because it does have a very beautiful um it has touching moments as well as not just the eeks. Um I kind of want to play another one, if it's okay. Oh yeah, I have the power. <laughs> yeah, you're in charge. Um, someone said, oh, the voice is not real. And I'm like, well, that's the big thing, isn't it? It's like to go on TV, they've had to take a, a, a stand, or at least he seems to have in the story, at least taken a stand that his way through it is to say they're not real, whatever mm. real means, and ignore them. And I, I remember doing an interview with a young person who cried after this movie because what they took from it was that um, he chose to ignore the voices forever and they never went away. He just never got to, you know, they, they never communicated again. They were his friends, like mm. some of them at least. They were his companions, his little niece. It was a really complicated, rich relationship. And that's a bit I love. That's um, what I think messes me up about it, I think, is mm. that for him to, as a character, be well again and be okay again, he needs to accept that they're not real now and that's just it. Mm, you know? That's what you need to go home from the cinema. Yeah, that's the takeaway <laughs> message. Yeah. It's like, just get over it, it's not real. Yeah, which is- That's how we simple. sleep at night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna play yeah, the... mine are real too, Gary. The, like, um, trust me. <laughs> well, you know, I've been gone. They're not gone. Maybe they never will be. But I've gotten used to ignoring them, and I think as a result, they've kind of given up on me. You think that's what it's like with all our dreams and our nightmares, Martin? You've got to keep feeding them for them to stay alive. And John, they, they haunt you, though. Well, they're my past, Martin. Everybody's haunted by their past. And that's him um, sort of years later and they're still there. And it, it just feels really sad to me, like incredibly. Mm. Based on a real guy as well, right? Yeah, but that no, the Nobel maths dude. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Nobel maths Sorry, my ignorance there, my ignorance, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> No, but it, it is. And I don't, I know the story's based on his, um, and I believe that he chose not to take medication, which I think is something that they alluded to in the film. But I don't know how much is accurate or not. Um, yeah. But that, that's sad. 
think. Mm. I think people really like that film, don't they? Because it it's really the genius madman, isn't it? Mm. And like he almost has to shut off that part of him for people to be satisfied, I guess. Mm. Is madness in film sort of more, because that, that genius mad trope uh, thing, and I think it's a trope a lot, you're either suffering, killy, or geniusy. You're you, very can be, you can be babbling, crazy, or a genius. Those are the three kinds of madman you can be. Yeah, I babble really well. Um, I'm a babbler, I'm a babbler. Yeah. Or creative, a bit kooky maybe, but. Yeah. I think subcategory of genius. Mm-hmm. Ah. <laughs> yeah, I guess comedic as well as subcategory. Yeah. Right? yeah, yeah, like Robin Williams kind of under the, yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it's it's an interesting one because for him it wasn't like a storyline plot. It was kind of, some of that was his life and his overwhelm and experiences, whatever they are, because I don't know him, I can't say. And his uh, life just seemed very intertwined like he did major things someone said here that he was uh doing sort of game theory yeah. heard of complicated um, and i think it's fairly simple to explain if you're really smart which isn't me so <laughs> luckily we're not doing game theory <laughs> maybe that's next week um does make me think though about um shine because we're going on to the the genius uh experiency thing been good with the segues on this aren't we actually we are. yeah, yeah big time too many of these clips <laughs> so let's um let's bring up shine does anyone know like well because people might not have seen the movie so you might if anyone's watched it um guys you might want to say a little bit about it if not i can give a blurbing overview yeah i only found out this film existed today same and but coincidentally it was the answer to a get uh, like a question on a quiz show earlier and I was like whoa really whoa. oh yeah it's strange isn't it it's weird yeah anyway that is very good yeah. so I haven't watched it fully I've watched quite a few of the clips to choose ones um, but and someone who knows more might want to write in the box and tell everyone else about it but basically um, there's a guy who is a young gifted sort of pianist genius um, who also gets diagnosed with schizophrenia and has time where things are working well, times where he goes into asylum, he makes friends and has people looking after him and then he's too much and then he goes back and it's a challenging life, but eventually he makes some connections um, that work for him. This is at one of the periods where he's sort of taken in by somebody. I, I must warn you, I've got someone staying on weekends. <laughs> Not now the Scorpio, is it? Very funny girls. He's a child prodigy. Doctor, yeah, I thought better already. To me. No, she's not a doctor. Oh, not a doctor, sweet no, no, Sylvia. She's an astrologer. Oh, specialist, a heart she's surgeon. She's from Sydney. Oh, an open heart surgeon. <laughs> oh, ridiculous. Oh, I'm ridiculous. I'm ridiculous. <laughs> Gillian. I'm like, Gillian, that's it. If you're lucky, Gillian might do your chart for you. Oh, would she, Sylvia? Would she, would she do a chart for you? What sort of chart, Sylvia? What sort of chart? Astrological chart. Oh, the stars, the stars. I love the stars. Astronomical, very astronomical. Oh, the planets. I mustn't forget the planets, of course. Of course, Mercury and Neptune.
Gillian on the telephone. Oh, the music of the speeds, the music. If music be the food of love, oh, very gastronomical, isn't it, Gillian? Oh, the food of love, it is, Gillian. Oh, oh, oh. What's he like when he gets to know you better? Oh. Ah. Oh, someone has written more. Thanks, Dolly. I kind of remembered it was a David, but couldn't remember his full name. But yes, it's based on an Australian pianist. Ah. Um, yeah, I wanted to include extreme states that weren't voices in this because we put it in our title. But any instant reactions to that? It's a bit different to what we've seen so far, isn't it? He mm. seems to be less troubled. Yeah. He's being presented as being quite like manic, but in a way that's almost like, you know, for the purposes of the film, appropriate to someone who's like brilliant at the piano, you know, yeah. I suppose. Yeah. Like he was introduced as I've got this child genius. Uh, mm. And it was joyful. It was on the trampoline. Yeah, he was naked, but it wasn't threatening. He wasn't aggressive. He was almost like childlike in the way that he was like effusive and, and innocent. And mm. um, it was kind of a non threatening madness. Yeah, and that's nice, harmless. That's yeah. kind of the vibe. Yeah. Was he hearing the piano? Is that what was going on? I don't know. Okay. I have no idea. But, yeah. I'd have to watch the whole movie, probably. Yeah, I'll check it out, I think. <laughs> What's interesting is just, if you think about normal behaviour, <laughs> that isn't it. Like, nakedness, jumping up and down. It was kind of accepted in an awkward, like, sweet way, like a, a motherly, there, there. I don't know. It's an interesting relationship. It's quasi-patronising, to be honest. Um, but, well, but, you know, that better than demonizing, I think. Patronizing is a step up from demonizing, but it's still not great. <laughs> also, it's just that sense of, you could see in the look of the, the guest, uh, what, what's going on here. And that kind of, when someone's breaking a lot of social norms by being really out there, really effusive, yeah. really joyous, uninhibited, how that breaks so many things that we don't even say that are rules, but we kind of know they are. And I know when I've been really high, people have felt very unsafe around me, not because I was doing anything really, like I wasn't hurting anyone, I wasn't doing anything major, but they just had this sense that they didn't know what was gonna happen. Would I strip? Would I, I was like jumping on the bed, I was excited. Um, and it just felt unsafe. And it's probably the more difficult state, like the voices people can get sometimes, the beliefs, but the intents of the highs and the, the speaking. And that are generally the ones I found more difficult to come back from, but also that other people have felt more uncomfortable with me then than when I'm talking about aliens. Like they've seen sci-fi films, so they can get the aliens sometimes, but the highs. It's because it's, it's harder to put yourself, I think I feel it's harder to put yourself in that person's shoes sometimes you know, mm. when they're experiencing that. So it can be more scary. Uh, and it, it's, it's, it's definitely not a bad depiction in terms of film of someone who's like in that um, extreme state of like mania at that time. You yeah, know? you wouldn't say it's unrealistic. Not at all, no, no. but um, yeah. Yeah, there's another clip. Um, how are we doing for time? Do we want another shine clip? We should get his piano because as someone said, he's like, it's based on a guy who is an amazing pianist and I, yeah. It's a, it's a slightly happy, sad, happy, sad clip. So I'll do that one if that's okay with you guys. It's the cafe gig. It's towards the end of the movie, I think. Um, and if I can share my screen, he basically goes back to a cafe that he has been to uh, before, finds his way back. Um, there we go, showing cafe gig. Sylvia, your stray dog's back. You want me to get rid of him for you? No. <laughs> hey, baby, what about a chew? A <laughs> chew, baby, sure, no worries, no worries. <laughs> Bra? 
Bravo. Bravo, encore. <laughs> oh, sock it to us, Liberace. That's enough. <laughs> That was really fun to watch, actually. Yeah. <laughs> I was expecting them to just stare at him at the end in silence. Like, oh, you're way too good at the piano. Must be something wrong with you. <laughs> yeah. I kind of find it very, I like that. Um, so this bit, basically, he just goes back and he plays the piano. It sounds like initially they assume that he's just like this weirdo come off the street and they're kind of ridiculing him and feel a bit uncomfortable, but it all changes when he can, when he shows himself to be like this virtuoso. And the bit that gets me really sad is like, it's great for that story, but it's true. This is what we do in society. And I'll count myself in that. Like I try not to, but I can judge first. Um, if I feel uncomfortable or unsafe, I might be like, oh, I don't really want to sit there. And I have to challenge myself to go, no, don't judge, Ray, just like be. <laughs> um, yeah. Almost so, as though you have to be good at the piano to have some sort of value. Yeah, that's the thing that he's not of value in himself is what that says to me in, in that clip. And that's- Yeah, shame about the craziness, but at least he's very good at piano. Yeah. You know? And what happens for those of us who are not good at the piano? <laughs> yeah, well, I can't play piano. Mm -hmm. I can, not like that though. You that good though? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So the kind of mad genius thing again. I really want a film that's just um, someone hearing voices who goes about their daily business, and it's no big deal. Like there's some bad times and some okay times, some funny times, some sad times. It would probably be really dull though. It'd be like my life. And who wants to watch my life? Um, yeah. You need a bit of like spicy excitement in movies, I suppose. That's the intrinsic mm -hmm. issue that we come across here. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Because this is always going to be about entertainment, isn't it? Um, mm. So even, there needs to be sensationalism, you know. Yeah. Kind of. Even the um, the stuff that's kind of based on real life, it's still got to be depicted for people and got to be interesting. Ooh. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just getting distracted by what people are writing, which is kind of lovely, but I need to focus on you guys too. Um, we have 15 minutes. What I'm gonna do is opening it up just for five minutes um, to anyone that wants to um, pop in and say anything about the films or the issues that we've been talking about thus far. It will just be five minutes because I've got a few more clips to play. But um, any, any, any hands? No problem if there's no hands because we've got more clips, more things to talk about, but I just want to not like block you all out. Ooh, cool. So have we got any more hands? We have Craig and Jason, so I'm gonna, Assume that you both know what you're doing and just, because um, you've had your hands up, I will uh, invite you in. And we've just got a couple of minutes so that we've still got time for some clips. So Craig. Uh, usher you back. That's what the chat box is saying. That's a good one. Yeah, usher, that's a nice one. Mm. Um, I'm not doing the videos just so we don't lose time on that. So we've got your lovely 
icons instead, but welcome to, to the Zoom room. Thank you. Um, well, what I found was, it, it's funny because when we're not, um, when like the movies you're showing, the truth is I did a, um, in Bridgeport is where we have Montgomery County Hearing Voices Network. Mm -hmm. And so they were doing a mental health thing. So we did a um, advertisement and did a 90 minute presentation on the Montgomery County Hearing Voices Network. And it was funny, they advertised that and only three people showed up. Mm -hmm. So I was surprised at, at how few people are actually interested in it is the topic as far as in actual understanding the truth of the experience, but people love to watch it when it comes to, you know, video and us hurting people. They don't want to hear, you know, the, the normal experience. Mm. So it's okay to be a subject of like entertainment, um, the genius or the, the mad, scary ax murderer, they're just the regular, let's meet up some people that hear voices and hear about their experience. Not so much. Yeah, I thought I thought with all this stuff that you hear in the news, they'd be interested in talking to someone that's actually had to experience mm. to find out something real about the experience mm. instead of just what you hear in the movies. But it seems that people are just quite content believing that we're all serial killers and be done with it. Mm. Some people, I wonder if there's, because there's loads of ways of seeing it, because we do some of these things here um, for our sort of HVNs, and it really varies getting um, people. I remember I came to Montgomery County um, with Bertiff quite a few years ago, um, and we did a Young People Voices thing, and we only got a couple of families, but it was kind yeah. of awesome. Yeah, no, we have some things that we have, like, a we do a... Um quarterly we call it but it's usually done about twice a year usually and we'll have sometimes 75 100 people show up for that mm -hmm. but that's from the mental health system this was actually for the borough of Bridgeport for like people that are completely not know nothing of mental health mm. yeah it's tricky isn't it we're just uh we're scraping the surface we've got a lot of stigma and and sort of prejudice to get through because we're still we're still seen as objects of fear I guess mm -hmm. but it's great that you even did it and you got some people but it must have been disheartening as well yes it was it was because I was so excited about taking it to the community because mm. we have good luck when we take it to like um we do psychiatric hospitals and things and the doctors are very interested in hearing from a different perspective mm. but so i was excited about taking it to the community and found out that it it since it doesn't seem to relate to movies it didn't have the excitement that i was anticipating yeah it does make me wonder what it would be if you did a movie night with um like a movie that has voices in it and go people like free screenings and then had like a voice hero panel stuffed in at the end that, that people didn't really know they were getting or, or they it was part of the free ticket um i'm really sneaky but it feels like yeah it's tricky to tricky to get um to get people interested i'm gonna check in with craig and see what what he wanted to offer before we head back and have the last couple of clips craig any thoughts from you uh, hello, testing one, two, three. Hello. Oh yeah, that's me. Um, yeah, I, I think, uh, I mean, when we talk about film, I, for me, oh gosh, uh, for my experience, I was making all sorts of noises. Um, <laughs> uh, for my experience, films actually saved my life. That, I know it sounds a bit profound, but um, uh, at moments when I was uh, sort of facing uh, great challenges in my life, um, uh, one particular film that had a profound effect of me was a film called Ink by uh, Jamie Winans. Mm. Um, and uh, after watching that film, um, because I, I mean, I, at the time I was uh, having suicidal thoughts. Um, and <coughs> oh gosh, after watching that film, um, it, it it snapped me out of it. it. It actually literally saved my life. I don't know if anyone's watched the film called Ink. I haven't. No. I, 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 I definitely recommend 
if you ever get a chance because it is um again it's a, it's a film that kind of explores that hidden world that we all navigate um and it kind of it, it, it it's a film not many people have watched because it didn't appear in mainstream cinema it, it, it was a kind of cult film uh that that made it success uh, actually by pirating um the director uh made the film and he tried to release it as best he could but um, he, uh, a lot of people got gained interest in it through uh, pirating the film. Uh, in fact, piracy actually um, uh, made the film reach such a large audience. And, and Jamie Winans, as a director, was quite um, encouraging of that. Um, but if you haven't seen that film, um, yeah, if, uh, if you get the opportunity, it's a, it's a sci-fi uh, sort of fantasy. Mm. And uh, yeah. It sounds sounds good and uh, quite a few uh, I can see um, at least one person's kind of gone oh on my list now and it's definitely on mine. It flecked up when I was doing some research for this. So yeah. It, uh, yeah. It's strange how a lot of the films that people actually seem to like never heard of mm. or they never get even in cinemas. Uh, Silver Linings Playbook is also a, a, another good one. I don't know if that's what uh, yeah, I haven't watched list. it. Um, that's about uh, the main character's got um, manic depression and there's, uh, um, there's a trauma in his life that triggers off his manic episode. It's got Robert De Niro in it. Um, it was made in 2012. Um, it's got the guy, I forget his name, the actor. Um, it's Bradley Cooper. That's it, Bradley Cooper, yeah. yeah. And uh, again, that's another film that, because uh, I, was, I was going through the same process in my life at the same time back in 2012, 2013, when the film came out. So uh, what, what uh, I tend to sort of be drawn to films that uh, if ever I'm going through some kind of profound experience, I'm, I'm watching films that kind of reflect that. Um, and watching that film kind of, uh, it, it was good to see that it's becoming more in the mainstream and, you know, uh, with, with sort of big Hollywood um, actors that are kind of giving a, I, I think Silver Linings Playbook, it being a comedy, it, it um, um, I think it's you're finding issues to do with mental illness uh, starting to become more uh, in it, more become become more popular uh, in films these days. And that's it's going to be one of our next ones. I think is going to be on TV programs because when I was trying to think of what films I wanted to show, all I could think of is loads of loads of TV series that are around now that kind of go with those themes. I'm super conscious of our four minutes left and I need to play a couple more clips. So I'm going to thank you, Craig, very much. And thank Ashley. you very much. This is great, by the way. This is fantastic. This is like a dream. <laughs> Being able to talk about film with other, other people that are passionate about film. But yeah. thanks for having me on board. Absolute pleasure. Um, there you go. And thank you to Jason as well. Um, there we go. Huh. Four minutes, no problem. I'm really stuck because I'm torn. I really want to show Drop Dead Fred because it's funny and everyone needs a bit of funny. From what he said, I kind of also want to show the voices with Ryan Reynolds, which is funny, but also stigma inducing. Um, it's the killy trope and also the X-Men clip. Help me out, John. Uh, X-Men's pretty good. How about we do an X-Men and then Drop Dead Fred? to end on because I think a bit of um oh there's quite a few drop dead freds oh and there's some x-men too yeah. cool. drop there's dead a is a good one to end with isn't it yeah right. we're gonna do x-men and then drop dead fred and then at the end of that we won't do masses of talking because we've talked a lot and sometimes you just got to enjoy little clips what I'll say at the end of all of this, you're welcome to leave. I'll be sending, obviously you're welcome to leave. I'll be sending around when I've got enough, there's cat dog chaos in my house at the moment, sorry. When I've got enough headspace, I'll send around um, a link to all of the clips that we featured, plus all the ones we haven't featured for your own viewing pleasure. Um, I'll also check with those of you that joined us in the speaking mode, how you feel about it being on YouTube and edit out bits that you want, because um, I'm nice like that and all of that stuff. And I'll let you all know when it's out on YouTube so you can have another look if you fancy it. Huh. And I'll also, cause we're gonna do an award ceremony. After you've had a chance to look at the clips again, I'll get you to vote somewhere else. Cause I couldn't do the tech thing today. My head's just not in the game. 
that in mind, X-Men final clip. I'm choosing this because this is actually, um, this, you know, um, Craig said something saved his life. This pretty much spoke to me at a time when I couldn't, I felt like I couldn't continue with my voices, with the crap in the world and with the parts because I experienced dissociative phenomena. And I watched this movie and I cried my eyes out and regularly watched this bit just to keep me going. It's cheesy as hell though, I'm sorry. He retreated into himself. I, I wanted to help do something, so. We can't see it. Treat his spine, you know, derived from the same formula that helps me control. Right, we can't see the. That's all right, it's good to have I shared the screen. To keep myself I was balanced. too busy going, oh my God, the time, the time, the time. Ha <laughs> ha. Let's share the screen this time. <laughs> Some kind of magic genius. Here we go. For those at home. Oh, you're muted. At that point, there's a giant sequence of lovely, inspiring uh, images, which I didn't want to inflict on you. Um, but yay, the promise of not analysing it too much. Let's do Drop Dead Fred. And thank you to everyone that is here. I'm going to try and actually share the screen and do everything completely OK. No, I'm not, because Drop Dead Fred Ah, there you are. Hopefully. The mega bitch! Let me at her! Is this for me? Give me an axe! No, no, give me a chainsaw! I'm gonna slice her into tiny pieces! Well, it is a lovely day for it. <laughs> the death breath! <laughs> she killed me with the death breath! <laughs> Be gone, evil one! muted again there we go apologies um that that was only a small one finding drop dead footage uh from a long time ago on youtube is really challenging <laughs> but it was a little clip of awesomeness and it proves that voices imaginary friends and peoples do not have to be without humor i just wish that some of my voices had an ounce of that hilarity um <sighs> Anything, final words from you guys, because people are saying goodbye, which has been lovely. And it's nice to see people uh, thanking each other and, and us, but guys, John, Owen, any words from you? Oh, um, I mean, it has been, it's been really fun. I think it's been nice to, to chat about this stuff. Um, nice to think about it. Like, like you were saying, we've just been watching some of these clips for the first time ourselves. And I'm just, it's nice reacting to them with you guys and stuff. And I think we've all had some really interesting reflections and I'm definitely going to be taking some of it away with me to kind of fall over a bit. So, yeah. And thanks for everyone who came as well. Yeah, it's been really fun. It's been good to get some recommendations that I'd never have heard of otherwise. Uh, and thanks, Ray, for putting this on and give me somewhat of a productive reason to watch loads of films. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Ray. That's a cool <laughs> And not um, feel terrible. <laughs> and yeah, and thank you to everyone that's been with us um, and those that were courageous enough to have your voice in the room or your video in the room. Thank you so much. I'll be in touch with you guys to check how you feel about editing it or not. And also thanks to everyone that's really, it's been nice to see the, the chat screen go. And also for those that haven't done any of that, but have just been with us, that has been fantastic too. Thank you so much. I'm kind of tempted to do a voice hearers reaction um, YouTube thing to a voice hear related movie where we just sit and chat and react to a random Come movie. On. That's not real. Um, maybe another day, but thank you so much. So what I'm gonna ask you guys to do is just gently say your goodbyes, <laughs> stream it. Um, and we'll be here for a few minutes. I'm gonna put up the flyer. So it's like, like it's like the closing time at um, a club or something. 
so I'm gonna do that and then you guys say goodbyes if after like a few minutes there's five minutes there's still people here I might usher you towards the door but I don't want to check you out because it feels yucky so thank you so much um and yeah any ideas for future events let us know um and hopefully uh see you next time and we'll keep this stuff going even when lockdown is uh, over I think because it's so cool to connect with people when we don't usually have these opportunities yeah, you could do like a film night can you yeah well that's a it and actually go. watch the whole film like yeah. um ages ago I believe there is technology that allows you to sync